6.3, we're talking about the unit circle, and this is a fundamental part of trigonometry. This is something that forms a lot of the basis for the way we think and understand trig, um, so it's not going away. And it starts with kind of this arbitrary circle that we draw called the unit circle. And it's got a radius of 1, which is why it's called the unit circle, and its center is at the origin. So here is my unit circle, you see it kind of right below. Here's my center at the origin, and its radius is 1, and I can kind of draw that in anywhere. So the distance from the center to the, uh, the circle itself is 1 unit. And we use this as the base for deriving the values of the trig functions at, in our case, special angles, but I guess realistically, you could do this for just about any angle. But we're going to deal with some special angles, some, uh, some special triangles that we've seen um, potentially in geometry. So we're going to start with this 45 degrees, 45 degree, 45 degree, 90 degree triangle. And to convert that to radians, because you will see both, remember that 45 degrees is the same as pi over 4 radians. And we might, we, we might remember from geometry that in this kind of a triangle, both legs of the triangle are equal in length. So we know a couple other things. So since we know these legs, these legs are equal, maybe we'll just call them both x for now. And the hypotenuse is actually formed from the radius of my circle, right? So if I actually draw in my radius in the circle right, at 45 degrees, and I were to drop a perpendicular line, it forms this triangle that I'm looking at now, and this is kind of where we're getting this from. So its radius is 1 because it's the unit circle. Well, we can use the Pythagorean theorem in order to figure out the lengths of these missing sides, right? So I've got x squared plus x squared equals 1 squared, which is just 1. I've got 2x squared equal to 1. So I've got, eventually I'm going to get x equals 1 over root 2. And if we rationalize that, because that's a lot more user-friendly, we get root 2 over 2. So we're going to stick with that root 2 over 2 for x. And based on that fact now, we can start to construct our trig values, or our values of the trig functions at 45 degrees. So the sine of 45 degrees, or the sine of pi over 4, depend, depending on which one you see, well, we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So square root of 2 over 2 divided by 1. Anything divided by 1 is itself, right? So this is just root 2 over 2. And we're going to follow the same process for cosine of 45, or cosine of pi over 4. And I want adjacent, which is just x, so root 2 over 2, adjacent over hypotenuse. Anything divided by itself, anything divided by 1 is itself. So root 2 over 2. And tangent of 45 degrees, uh, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so opposite and adjacent root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2, well, anything divided by itself is 1. So tangent of 45 is 1. And what this starts to do is it starts to build up our vocabulary in trig. We're starting to kind of compile this reference base of trig values at these special angles that are going to be instrumental to us in just computing with trig and solving equations and all of the necessary work that we have to do in trigonometry. So this is kind of where it starts. We're going to apply the same logic to our 30, 60, 90 degree case. And again, just to start kind of translating this to radians, 30 degrees is the same as pi over 6 radians. And 60 degrees is the same as pi over 3 radians. And again, this falls on the unit circle, which means the radius of the unit circle is 1. So it's no different than, again, I were to draw a 30 degree angle, drop a perpendicular line, and that makes a right triangle. So this is the radius of the unit circle, so its hypotenuse is 1, and one thing we know is that the hypotenuse is equal to twice the short leg. So if my hypotenuse is 1, and that's twice, of, twice the short leg, my short leg is 1 half. We can also make this easier on ourselves because maybe we don't want to deal with fractions. And I'm just going to scale this up by a factor of 2 to make this even easier on ourselves. 
because again, why deal with fractions if we don't have to, right? So using the Pythagorean theorem, I need to find this missing piece here. So plus one equals two squared, which is four, x squared equals three, x equals root three. And I can go through and do all my trig functions again. So sine of 30 is uh, opposite over hypotenuse, so 1 half. Cosine of 30 is adjacent over hypotenuse, so I get root 3 over 2. Tangent 30 is opposite over adjacent, so I get 1 over root 3, which we're going to make that easier on ourselves, and we're going to rationalize it to root 3 over 3. Well, 60 degrees happens to be an important angle for us as well. 60 degrees is just another easy to find measurement on the unit circle. So we can also calculate the trig values at 60 degrees, right? Everything's now rel uh, relative to this angle up here. So the sine of 60 degrees, right? Opposite 60 degrees, root three. So I have root three over two cosine of 60 degrees, adjacent over hypotenuse, 1 half, and tangent 60 degrees, opposite over adjacent, root 3 divided by 1. And you may start to notice something, and actually I'm going to move these just up here. You might notice that these two values are equal, and these two values are equal. Something about these two values will be connected as well, but that's later on. Um, we're going to come back to those. Those are identities that are going to come in handy later on. Um, we will talk about those in a different section. The last thing I want to talk about in this part of 6.3 is what I call a trivial case or what we call degenerate triangles. And that just means that these two angles are not going to look like real triangles on the graph. But we can still think about them like triangles in order to come up with their values their trig functions, their trig values at those angles. So zero degrees is the same as zero radians. And 90 degrees is the same as pi over two radians. Right, and think about it. A, a zero degree angle is not going to come off of the x-axis, the positive x-axis at all, right? This is, that's zero degrees right there. So it doesn't look like a triangle, but everything we've done so far has been making triangles, so I'm just going to pretend that it looks like a triangle. We're just going to kind of work with it here. So unit circle, the radius is always 1, and if I go back to my drawing here, this is a quote triangle that is all length and no height, right? It doesn't come off of the x-axis at all, so its length is 1 and its height is 0. Now it's just a triangle, and based on that logic, sine of 0 is 0, opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of 0 is 1, adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent of 0 is 0, opposite over adjacent. And we can do the same thing with 90 degrees. Right now I'm going to work relative to this angle. So sine of 90 is 1. Right now I have, I had to show you, I guess, this way. I have a triangle quote-unquote, that is up here. It's all height, no length. So cosine of 0, sorry, cosine of 90 is 0, adjacent, adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent of 90, this is interesting, opposite over adjacent, 1 over 0. I can't divide by 0, so tangent 90 we say is undefined. It does not exist. So we're just starting now to put together the basis of our knowledge in trig. These are numbers, these are values that you should start committing to memory or you should be able to draw these three triangles in order to derive the values for yourself. They are so critical to speedy, efficient computation in trig. Without them, you're going to you're going to struggle a little bit. It helps so much to have these. These to me are the equivalent of your multiplication tables. These are the trig multiplication tables, basically. They are 
essential. They are the building blocks.